So in the previous class, we were talking about the inductor, and I told you for the inductor, I have four different quantities. I would like to find them. I'd like to find the equation of the voltage, which is equal to LDI by dt. I would like to find the equation of the current, which is 1 over L integral of V dt plus the initial current. And the equation of the power, which is V times I, and the equation of the energy, which is integral of P dt. Or I can say that the energy is equal to half L I square if the initial energy was zero. Based on that, he asked me to solve this problem, and this problem is similar to one of the problems in the assignment that's required on Monday. I give you similar to this one, and I asked you the current, the source current is I L of T is equal to 10 times E to the power negative 5 T. And this is the circuit that I'm using. This is the source current I. And the voltage here, V L of T, and the inductance is equal to 100 milli Henry. This is in case of T greater than zero. He asked me to calculate V L of T, calculate P L of T, calculate W of T, which is the energy. So if you would like to calculate V, V is equal to what? In case of the inductor, you remember the equation? LDI by dt. So if you would like to find V, I can say for part A, VL of T is defined as LDI by dt. So this guy will be equal to L, which is this number, 100, multiplied by 10 to the power negative 3, multiplied by the derivative of I, which is this guy, 10, uh, I forgot here T, there is T here. So multiply it by 10 T, e to the power negative 5 T, this guy with respect to T. So if you would like to find the derivative for two functions multiplied together, like for example, F and G, the derivative of f times g, let me write that here. So if I have function f and function g, and I would like to find the first derivative of that, this guy is equal to f prime, right? Multiplied by g plus f multiplied by g prime, right? And this is what I'm going to do for this part. I have two different functions here. T function, and e to the power negative 5t. Actually, 10 is constant. I could put it outside the derivative because it's constant. So I will say this guy is equal to 10 times 100 times 10 to the power negative 3. So at the end, I will have 1. Right? So I will have d by dt for two functions. The first function is t, and the second function multiplied by e to the power negative 5t. So this will be equal to f dot g. The derivative of t will be 1 times e to the power negative 5t. So I will have only e to the power negative 5t. Plus t multiplied by the derivative of e to the power negative 5t. It will be e to the power negative 5t multiplied by the derivative of negative 5t, which is negative 5. So at the end, I will have this guy will be negative 5 times e to the power negative 5t. So this will be equal to e to the power negative 5t negative, uh, negative uh, e to the power negative 5t negative 5t multiplied by e to the power negative 5t. This is what? This is VL of t. If you would like to draw this guy, I didn't ask you to sketch it, but if you would like to sketch it, you will find what? For those who are strong in mathematics, 
If I would like to draw V L of T. If I would like to draw V L of T. So at T is equal to zero. At T is equal to zero. I have E to the power zero, which is one. Minus zero, which is T multiplied by five, multiplied by E to the power zero at the end. At T is equal to zero, V L of T is equal to one. So I'm going to start from one. Then, what is V? Actually, V is the first derivative of I with respect to the time times L. So if you would like to continue drawing that, if you are strong in mathematics, you will realize that dI by dt at that point is equal to the slope. The slope at that point is equal to what? Yes, so if I know where is this and I think it is at 0 0.2, I can say he gave it to me. I can say I'm expecting zero here at that point. If you don't know, that's OK. You can substitute here by 0 0.2. And you can choose another point here. So if you're trying to do that, you will realize that this guy will look like that. This is the voltage. Yes. This guy, it is multiplied by 100, multiplied by 10 to the power negative 3, all of them will be 1. Got it? Excuse me? This is 10. I moved it here, multiplied by 100, multiplied by 10 to the power negative 3, it gave me 1. Any question, guys? Okay, now he asked me after that to find PL of T. I think PL of T is very easy to find it because you are going to multiply V times I. So VL of T, uh, PL of T, sorry, is equal to V of T multiplied by I of T. So you will multiply this equation by the equation of the current and at the end you will realize that this guy will be equal to 10 t times e to the power negative 10 t minus 50 times t square times e to the power negative 10 t i think it is very easy to to find that because you are going to multiply this guy by this and this if you are multiplying e to the power by e to the power you you will add the power so e to the power 5 times e to the power 10, it will be e to the power 5 plus 10. OK. Now, if you would like to draw the power or sketch the power equation, you can substitute here by t is equal to 0 and find p. Substitute by t is equal to 0 0.2 and find p. And substitute by another point here, which is 0 0.3 and sketch the curve. But if you are strong in mathematics you will realize what this is t and this is p you will realize if you would like to multiply v and i you can multiply by using the curves so zero times one will be so i have the point and zero times any value, which is 800, for example, it will be zero. So this is 0 0.2 and this is 0 0.2. And then those are tending to be zero. So I'm expecting I have a curve here like that. I'm right. Am I right? So as you are multiplying this by this, this by this and so on. So I'm expecting there is something like that. Right? Curve like that. I, I didn't ask you to find the value. I asked you to sketch that curve. And then I have something here also because you are multiplying this by this, this by this. At the infinity, they are equal to zero. So this is negative, this is positive. Positive times negative will be. And at the end, it tends to zero. So it's something like that. At infinity, it tends to zero. 
If you don't know, you can choose like three, four points and sketch. I didn't, by the way, ask you to sketch. But I'm sketching that because I would like to show you something from that sketch. Then I asked you to calculate the energy, the last part, the energy. So the energy of T actually is equal to integral of P dt. So it is equal to integral of this guy, which is 10 T multiply it by e to the power negative 10 t negative 50 t squared times e to the power negative 10 t dt. And if you would like to solve that problem, you have to find integral by parts. So you have two different functions multiplied, t and e to the power negative 10 t, and t squared times e to the power negative 10 t. If you still remember the integral by parts, that I showed you, integral of u dv is equal to uv minus integral of v du. So I'm going to choose one of the function to be u. Here, he chose x and dv, which is this function. So if you would like to do that, I can choose t as which function as u. And dv will be e to the power negative 10 t. And by the same way, I can choose t squared as u for another function and e to the power negative 10t as dv and find the integral by parts. If you try it to find the integral by parts, this guy will be equal to 5 t squared times e to the power negative 10t. This is w of t. By the way, if you find the integral integral for p dt, actually it should be plus constant, but I assume the constant is equal to zero. I assume the initial energy stored is equal to zero. So it should be plus constant, but I assume that is zero. Anyway, so I would like to draw this guy. For drawing this guy, what I have to do, I will, Try to find the integral of this guy. And I will try to find the integral of this guy, right? Because this is W, it is the integral of that and the integral of that. And the integral will be the area under the curve, right? And the area under the curve. So if you try to draw this curve, what you have to do, if this is T and this is W, I didn't ask you to draw it but I'm drawing it to show you something. If you try to draw it, substitute by t is equal to zero. So if you substitute it by t is equal to zero, I will start from zero. And then substitute by t is equal to 0.2. It will give you a specific value. And as you are increasing t, the value will be increased. So till you reach it to that. And if you try it to Substitute by t after 0.2, it will start to decrease to be something like that. This is the energy. Okay, this is what he asked me. But what I would like to show you right now, if you try to look to these curves, here, if you try to look to the current, the current was zero started to increase then it started to decrease after that am i right the power was positive and then became negative oh what is the meaning of the power positive is it gain power or lost power gain power oh what is the meaning of negative power okay so based on that curve for the period from 0 up to 0 0.2 this element which is the inductor was gaining power but after 0 0.2 it was losing that power or feeding that power to another part so i can realize from that from 0 to 0 0.2 it was a charging, like your cell phone. The battery was charging if it is plugged to the outlet. 
But if you try to remove it, the battery will start to discharge and it will lose its charge after a specific time, right? This is what happened. From 0 to 0 0.2, this guy was charging. After 0 0.2, it was discharging. That's why the time started to increase to reach it to 0 0.2. Time, second. After that, it started to decrease. And as a proof for that, the energy here from 0 to 0 0.2 the energy was increased. Why it is increased? Because this element was gaining energy, energy storage. But after 0.2, the energy started to be extracted. Are you seeing that, guys? This is what I would like you to pay your attention to understand from that problem. I didn't ask you about that, but I'm showing you what happened in that problem? So the inductor started to charge to reach it to a certain time. After that time, it started to discharge. And this will be our topic after the study break. We will start talking about the charging and discharging for the inductor and for the capacitor. And we are calling that like a transient response. So I have a specific time, the capacitor or the inductor will start to charge. And after that, I can disconnect that guy from the charger and I can use it as a storage battery to discharge its charge into another element to feed it. Any question for that? Let us talk about the new uh, the next part, sorry, which is the capacitor? So this problem that I have already solved it is similar to the problem uh, in the assignment. The capacitor looks like what? Looks like two different plates. I have this plate. And this another one. And in between there is a distance D. And there is a cross sectional area for this guy, which is A. And there is a potential difference between those two plates. And there is. A space here. Could be A or whatever. And based on that, I can say the capacitance is defined as. And this is what we studied before in physics. The capacitance C is defined as the charge Q divided by the voltage. So Q is representing the charge. And V is representing the potential voltage. And the unit for C is column bare volts or farad. We are writing it if. We started also in physics that the capacitance C could be written as epsilon multiplied by A divided by D. Whereas epsilon is called the permittivity. of the free space which is equal to 8.84 times 10 to the power negative 12 farad per meter and a is the cross sectional area and d and d is representing the distance this is another equation that we were using before in physics. These are the two equations for the capacitor. C is equal to Q over V, or C is represented as E multiplied by E divided by E. 
So if you try to go back to this equation, C is equal to Q over V, I can say that Q is equal to C times V. What do you like to do here? I'd like to do like what I did in case of the inductor. Find the equation for the voltage, the current, the power, and the energy. So Q is equal to C, dV, C times V. But we studied before that I is equal to dQ by T, by dT, which means the rate of a change of the charge with respect to the time. So if you try to find the derivative for both sides, I can say dQ by dT is equal to C dV by dT. But during the first class we studied, when I came here, I told you that I is equal to dQ by dT. So based on that, I can say I of T is equal to C dV by dT. From where I got that? From this equation. dQ by dT is representing the current I. So generally speaking, if you are talking about the capacitor, we are representing this capacitor by something like that. Two plates. This is the symbol for the capacitor. And C is representing the capacitance. And if there is a current I here, there is a voltage across this guy, which is V. Whereas I is equal to C dV by dT. This is the relation between I and the voltage in case of the capacitor. So if I asked you about DC circuits, if we are talking about DC circuit, we are exhibiting the voltage constant or variable. The voltage is constant. If the voltage is constant, then dV by dT is equal to zero. So in case of DC circuits, the current in the capacitor is equal to zero. If the current in the capacitor is equal to zero, or if the current of any element is equal to zero, it means that element is open or short circuit. It's open circuit. That's why in case of DC circuits, the capacitor was looking like an open circuit. That's why I didn't see any capacitor in the previous circuits that we studied before. I didn't see any inductor in the previous circuits that we studied before because most of our circuits that we were dealing with, we were talking about DC. We didn't talk about AC. DC means direct current and voltage. The voltage is constant. The current is constant. But in case of AC, the voltage and the current are variables. In case of the inductor, the voltage is equal to LDI by DT. So if you are talking about DC, the voltage is constant and the current is constant. V is equal to LDI by DT in case of the inductor. The first derivative for the current is equal to zero in case of the inductor, which means its voltage is equal to zero. Which means the inductor looks like a short circuit because the voltage is equal to LDI by DT in case of the inductor. But in case of the capacitor, its current is equal to C dV by dT. If the voltage is constant, the first derivative of V is equal to zero, which means the current for the capacitor is equal to zero. The current, not the, vo the voltage. The current for the capacitor is equal to zero. What about the voltage? No, there is a voltage. But the current is equal to zero. Since the current is equal to zero, the capacitor looks like a short, uh, uh, sorry, open circuit. And during that time, the capacitor is charging by a specific voltage. I know there is no current, but there is a charge, positive, negative charge. After a certain time, this capacitor will have a specific charge. And this capacitor will try to discharge its energy. But actually, the voltage coming from the capacitor will not vary and the current. Although it is charged by DC, but it is discharging by a specific curve, like what happened here. This guy charged by a certain current, 
but while this is charging, I have a curve. So the current in this is charging, it is following a curve. The current is not zero. I will have the same story here for the voltage for the capacitor. But in case of the voltage, I don't have current. I have the capacitor looks like open circuit, but the capacitor is a charging. I have DC source applied to that capacitor. I don't have current, but the capacitor is a charging, is storing energy. How come it is all in circuit and it is storing? Actually, I have a voltage. So I have a potential difference. So the capacitor is keeping the charging and charging to reach it to the maximum. Then disconnected, connected to another circuit. At that time, the capacitor will discharge. But for the discharging period, the voltage will not be constant. It will be variable, like what happened here in case of the inductor. I have here a charging and discharging, and the voltage became variable. That's why when we will start after the period about talking about the transient period for a charging and discharging for RL and RC circuit and RLC circuit, I repeat talking about that story. I will have a switch. The switch will be closed to charge the inductor or the capacitor. And then the switch will move to another position to another circuit to discharge the charge in that circuit. And this will be our story after the study break, charging and discharging the inductor and the capacitor. Now, let us talk about the voltage in case of the capacitor, because I told you that I have four different quantities. I would like to talk about them. I'd like to talk about the current, which is equal to C dV by dt. I'd like to talk about the voltage. The voltage in case of this guy, we studied in mathematics. If I have I is equal to C dV by dt, I can multiply both sides by dt. Then I will have I dt is equal to C dV, right? So I can rewrite this equation as what? As I of T dt is equal to C dV. Actually, V is function of T also, but for simplicity, I'm writing it V only. And then find the integral of both sides. I can say the integral of dV will be V. So based on that, I can say V is equal to 1 over C integral of I dt plus the initial voltage. Because the integral of this guy from T0 up to T will be equal to V of T minus V of 0. If you move V of 0 here, it will be with positive sign. So if this is the integral from T0 at T, this will be the voltage. The voltage across the capacitor is equal to 1 over C, integral of i dt plus v of t0. Now, the third component that I would like to talk about is the power. What is the power equation? Actually, the power equation is equal to v of t multiplied by i of t. So what about the energy? The energy, you told me the energy is equal to integral of p dt. If you try to write this, you will write integral of, if you assume the initial energy is equal to zero. So integral of p dt, I know that i is equal to c dv by dt. So I can say v multiplied by i, which is c dv by dt, and I have here dt. So this will be integral of c v multiplied by dv, which is equal to half c v square by assuming that the initial energy is equal to zero. But if you have initial energy, you have to substitute by the limits of integration. So at the end, what I would like to know from all of these equations, I would like to know four different equations for the capacitor. Number one, I is equal to C dV by dt. Number two, V is equal to 1 over C integral of I dt plus the initial voltage. Number three, the power is equal to V multiplied by I. Number four, the energy is equal to integral of P dt. These are the four different equations that I have already derived before 
in case of the inductor, and the four different equations since I came here one month and a half or more than one month and a half ago, we were deriving also four different equations for the resistor. So for each element, we derived four different equations. The equation for the voltage, the equation for the current, the equation for the power, and the equation for the energy. Last thing I would like to talk about today before leaving is how to find the total capacitance for some capacitors connected in series. How to find the total capacitance for some capacitors connected in parallel. So I will talk about capacitors connected in series. For capacitors connected in series, if I have here, for example, C1, C2, C3, and I have a voltage here V1, and I have a voltage here V2, and I have a voltage here V3. So I can say the total voltage is V total, which is equal to the summation of V1, V2, and V3. What about the current? I have the same current. Do I have different current? They are connected in series, so I'm expecting that I have the same current I. V total is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3, and you know that V is equal to 1 over C integral of I dt. Imagine the initial voltage is zero, so I can say V1 is equal to 1 over C1 integral of I dt plus 1 over C2 integral of I dt plus 1 over C3 integral of I dt, but what about V total? Actually, V total is equal to 1 over C total integral of I dt, right? So I can cancel based on that. I can cancel this guy with this guy with this guy with this guy. At the end, I will realize that 1 over C total is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. Oh, I have realized from that, in case of the capacitors, if they are connected in series, it is opposite to the inductor and the resistor. 1 over C total is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3 and so on. It is opposite to the resistor and the inductor. We are using that in case of parallel for the resistor and the inductor. Let us see the other equation in case of capacitors connected in parallel. So if you are talking about capacitors in parallel, connected in parallel, I can say if I have this guy, this guy, and this guy, this is C1, C2, C3, and they are connected in parallel. I am expecting they have the same voltage. V1 is equal to V total, is equal to V2, is equal to V3. So this voltage is V1. And the same V1, the same V1. So the total voltage is the same. That's why I'm not going to write here V1 or V2 or V3. I will write only V because the total is the same. Right? But what about the current? The current is the same. It is different. So if I have current here, which is I total, I can say the current here is I1, the current here is I2, and the current here is I3. So I total is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. I total is equal to what? Actually, I is equal to C multiplied by dV by dt. Am I right? So I'm expecting I total is equal to C total multiplied by dV by dt. What about I1? It is equal to C1 dV by dt. What about I2? It is equal to C2 dV by dt. What about I3? It is equal to C dV by dt, but C3. If you try to look to that equation, you can cancel this with this, with this, with this, at the end, you will realize that C total is equal to C1 plus C2 plus C3. So if I have some capacitors connected in parallel, 
the total capacitance is equal to the summation. If I have some capacitors connected in series, I will say 1 over C total is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3 and so on. So generally speaking, if you are talking about resistors, I have four equations. I'm talking about them. V, I, P, and the energy. If I'm talking about the inductor, I have four equations as well. If I'm talking about the capacitor, I have four equations. If you are talking about inductor or capacitor or resistor, you have to know how to find the total resistance, the total capacitance, and the total inductance. Last thing I would like to remind you is in case of DC circuits, the capacitor looks like an open circuit. But the inductor looks like a short circuit. So I show with you why we have that because V in case of the inductor is equal to L di by dt and I in case of the capacitor is equal to C dV by dt. So in case of DC circuit, the voltage across the inductor is equal to zero. Zero voltage means short circuit. In case of DC circuit, the first derivative of the voltage in case of the capacitor is equal to zero, which means the current in the capacitor is equal to zero. So the capacitor looks like an open circuit. So if I would like to solve a problem, I have to know the four different equations P, V, I, and the energy. Next class, we will solve some problems related to the power and the energy and the voltage for the capacitor. Thank you.